Hey guys, welcome to science class. Today we're going to be talking all about thermal energy. So this will be a two part video. This video uh, will be more like a lecture style, read through the PowerPoint. And the second video, I will actually read the textbook and we will complete the workbook page together. So that being said, you will definitely will need your textbook pages, 90, page 92 to 94 in the workbook page 65 they're all included in the science textbook pdf sent through email available for download in our class website and google classroom so um i know last week we it was exam week so we might have forgotten some things that we learned two weeks ago so let's go ahead and review some of the major concepts all right so my first question for you is stored energy or energy that an object has because of its position or condition is called blank. So look at this balloon, it's just chilling. Or think about the roller coaster that's on the top and about to go down. What kind of energy will we call that? If you said potential energy, you are correct. Question number two. Energy that an object has because of its motion is called blank. So just like the balloon where the air is finally coming out of the balloon, the air is showing what kind of energy here. If you said kinetic energy, you got it again. Question number three, getting a little trickier. The total kinetic energy of the particles in something is called blank. The answer is thermal energy. And our next question, what is the measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance called? So it's basically um, the measure of the kinetic energy in something. What is that called? It's called temperature. And what do we use to measure temperature, everyone? We usually use a thermometer, which looks like this. Okay, now, so like I said, our focus today is thermal energy. These are some real life examples of thermal energy. It's gonna be a lot of complicated sounding scientific definitions while we read today, but just kind of think about real life examples. That's how, that's what helps me understand science anyway. So we got the fire place, ice cream melting, heating up a nice bowl of soup. We're basically learning how thermal energy comes to play in this in these examples so the main thing we should go over is heat speed and attraction so here we have a solid so that could be something like a cell phone or a journal right and then we have liquid which could be like water and gas like air mm -hmm. so when something becomes hotter then the particles actually start to move faster. And when they're moving faster, they're actually less attracted to each other. So if you look at the solid, you can see all the particles, they're very attracted to each other, meaning that they're very close to each other, like a magnet. But as something gets hotter, so as the temperature gets higher, the particles will move faster and they will be more far apart. And Particles in a solid actually do not move very much as you can see in the picture They just vibrate very close to each other and they have a lot lot of attraction But as you keep as you can see in this example the liquid the particles are moving a little faster and Obviously the gas particles are moving the fastest Now what does that have to do with it, with thermal energy? Well, how does gas turn into liquid? So these are the states of matter solid liquid gas and heat and thermal energy can actually make them change into different states of matter for example the ice cream it started as a solid and then it quickly turns into a liquid form so it switches from a solid to a liquid because of thermal energy because of heat another example well how does gas turn into a liquid well as something is heated so as something gets hotter it obviously gets more thermal energy, which will move, which will cause the particles to move faster or slower, faster. And so a solid turns into a gas 
And if something is cooled down, then the opposite will happen. And it loses the thermal energy, so the particles won't move around as much. For example, sorry about that. For example, when think about a refrigerator. Think about your refrigerator. There's gas inside the refrigerator. As it cools down, it will turn into a liquid. So it what goes from the gas to a liquid. Now, all of this is great, Ms. Oak, but why is this important in real life? Thermal expansion, I actually added a video about thermal expansion in the playlist, so you should go ahead and watch that. It has a very good explanation. So first of all, expansion is when something gets bigger, like this GIF. Thermal expansion is basically something ability of a substance particles to move faster and expand without changing into a different state. So we know that heat and thermal energy will cause the substance to change into a different state. For example, this ice cream, it changed from a solid to a liquid because of heat. However, thermal expansion is the ability for something to Mm, to not change the state, to not change into a different state. So if you look at this, do you see a lot of this in engineering work, like in bridges and roads? Because as, like, if we are walking down this road and the sun is hitting on it, and it gets it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, then by science it should change into a different. It could turn into a different state. However, the thermal expansion prevents it from cracking or breaking. The engineers will build some spaces in between, so it the road has the um, the ability to kind of expand without breaking. So, as we as a big summary, almost every substance will expand when you put heat in it, and it will cool down when and it will contract when you cool it down. That's you have the air mattress example. As you um, put heat into it, it will expand and it will contract when cooled down. And how do we measure thermal energy? We measure it using calories. So I know you heard this term probably a lot. So the scientific definition is the amount of thermal energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water into one Celsius. So basically, calories are used to measure thermal energy. Now, quick thinking question for you. If you have plastic and metal, if you're heating both of them, which one do you think will store more thermal energy? So think about your seatbelt in the summer. When you touch the metal part, it becomes really hot fast. And then think about like a plastic bowl. Which one do you think will store more thermal energy? The answer is metal. That's why the seatbelt gets hot so quickly during the summer weather. All right, I know this was a lot of information. The topic of thermal energy could be confusing, so we'll, we'll understand more as we read the book. And please definitely do watch the two YouTube videos that I linked in the description box as well as the playlist because those videos do a really good job showing real life examples that will help you process all this information better, okay? So um, great job and we will go ahead, I will go ahead and move on to part two in just a few seconds.